بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum welcome to another episode of Out of Focus so last show we spoke about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said the intelligent person is the one who evaluates himself and prepares for what comes after death and the the foolish person is the one who follows his nafs however he likes and um which relies on Allah with wishful thinking inshallah we will be continuing this discussion with sister Taiba focusing on the second part of the hadith um assalamu alaikum sister Taiba um Taiba so in the previous show we spoke about the person who evaluates himself as intelligent and we spoke about what it means exactly to evaluate ourselves and now rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he continues this description of the intelligent person and he says that he is the one who acts for what comes after death how do we understand this aspect of this hadith okay well let's just remind ourselves so what intelligence what intelligence means sure. so intelligence is you know um, acquiring and so you're obtaining the knowledge and you're applying it yeah so it's not just obtaining the knowledge you also have to apply it sure. so if i was to give you an example to bring that uh, that definition to life sure. so let's say tomorrow i have an exam mm -hmm. and um i know it's at 1 pm tomorrow yeah and i know it's something that i can't really run away from yeah. but yeah i've made no preparations for it so i don't know i haven't revised for it i haven't I don't know what subject it is, I don't know where it is and I don't know exactly how I can get myself the top marks. Mm. Yeah, so there's an appointment that I can't run away from and yet I've made no preparations for it. So by the definition of intelligence that would make me not very smart, right? Because yeah, you haven't even like bothered to acquire that and obtain that knowledge. Yeah, yeah and, and another um, example would be me knowing how to get the top marks for tomorrow's exam. Yeah, I know exactly how to do it and yet I know how to do it and yet I haven't actually put that into place. So mm. I haven't actually practically, you know, revised for it, doing what I need to do sure. in order to get the top marks. Sure. So that that also makes me unintelligent because I've obtained the knowledge but I haven't applied it. Sure. So if we were to link that back to the hadith that sure. says, you know, um, the intelligent person is the one who prepares for what's after life, yeah. it's f for us that would mean, okay, so somebody who knows that they're going to die, mm -hmm. they understand that, it's clear cut, and yet they have made no preparations. Or another person who knows exactly how to have a happy life, a good life after their death, they know exactly how to do that, and yet they haven't actively taken the steps to ensure that the afterlife is a pleasant one. Yeah, you know, um, that's such a valid point because I guess a lot of us as Muslims we fall into yeah. the second category. Um, we might even fall into the first category. I mean, it means like if we believe that we're going to die, which is I guess everyone kind of has to believe. I mean, you see it all around you, and you know that's an appointment again like the exam you you can't run away from yeah. um so we all have this belief we all know for a fact we're going to die but we don't even do our research to find out okay what's expected of us after death is it nothing like some people might believe yeah nothing happens yeah but you still have to find out right you yeah. still have to do your bit and find out whether whether there is yeah, an instead of just life. hoping there's nothing yeah exactly and the, and the second person uh, like you've described is what I would say a lot of us as Muslims fall into where we we do believe that there is an afterlife that there is Jannah and there is Jahannam we have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of our actions mm. and so we recognize that with this death comes more right there, there are consequences just like there are results after exams mm. so we, we know what's going to happen um, but then again we still just don't live according to that thinking like we don't live our lives acor according to that thinking um, but I know like a lot of people might feel like, well, isn't death like a really morbid, depressing topic uh, topic to, to talk about? Yeah. Uh, what would you say to that? I'd say yes, it is definitely a morbid you know, topic to talk about, but it's a reality. And the way you, it's an unpleasant reality, but it's a reality, meaning you can't run away from it. So mm. in order to make it less of an unpleasant reality, prepare for it. Just like if you had a job interview and you know you need to go to this job interview, you know, it might make you feel nervous, might make you feel a bit, you know, sick, but in order to do well in that job interview, you make preparation so that when you actually go to the interview, it's a really good one. Um, so I would say making preparations for death is a really good idea. Um, you know, um, yeah. it's true that what you're saying, but I guess the reason we struggle with this is because in the, in the society that we're living in, yeah. uh, we don't really, <laughs> well, we're told that again, like um, just that death is a depressing topic, um, and we don't really think about this reality—the fact that we are returning um, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we see in 
in the books that we read or the shows that we watch um, or everything around us is technically telling us that we're to, to live it up and we live our lives as though we're going to live it forever. Um, but the reality is quite stark uh, from that and it's contrasted to Islam because Islam tells us to think deeply about life. Yeah. Um, and I think in some sense with this society that we're living in, um, it is also profitable to not really think about um, what comes after death, the, f the fact that we are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and the reason I say that is because, well, th there's, there's a whole big industry out of like marketing things that yeah. will help us just live this life. And like, so we have like um, countries that are uh, competing in building the biggest skyscrapers, sky 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 I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we have, even us, we compete with our family members um, in terms of wealth and houses, um, we compete with our friends in terms of like having brands and gadgets um, and so we always see this competition and it's encouraged in society essentially yeah. and so that's why I say there's a whole profit out of this um, but when we really think about the fact that oh you know we're gonna die and have to answer for that uh, it's a big loss in that sense. Yeah because um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that you know we're travelers in this life you know, we're, it's just a fleeting moment. We're going to go to the next life very soon. And therefore, that gives the impression, indicates to us that, you know, travel lightly. You know, you don't take your whole house with you when you go abroad. Exactly. Yeah. And, and to add to that, if we recognize that we are travelers, it yeah. also means that here, here is something temporary. Mm -hmm. So you don't build your whole life around a temporary thing that's just silly. Like if you had, I don't know, and, and you kind of just built your whole life. Like if I had a phone that I wasn't going to keep for long and I started to fill it with all my important information that I was just borrowing say from you mm. um, but I knew I had to give it back to you and then I was keeping everything that I need for like I don't know my exams in June um, that'd be really silly because I have to give it back to you tomorrow right yeah. so it's, it's something temporary you'd so lose just everything like wouldn't you yeah exactly and so if we build our whole life around something temporary well again that's not very intelligent um, and and to recognize that we are also as human beings, temporary. I think we just need to look around everything around us, um, look at everything around us, because it, it just seems to be screaming, well, you know, I'm going to end the, the sofa I'm sitting on, um, myself, yourself. Uh, unfortunately, and it's a fact that we are going to um, have an ending, uh, but it's about preparing for that. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, does the human being think that he will be left neglected? And in this context, it's speaking about um, the fact that we were created and that we are going to have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we believe this life is a test and we're going to be accounted uh, by Allah, our creator and the creator of all things. Um, so to add to this, what if someone is still not convinced? Like, how can someone live their whole life thinking about death? Okay, so we're not saying every conversation that you need to have with every single person needs to be based <laughs> on death. That's not what we're saying here. We're saying you need to live your whole life understanding that death is coming. So your whole life is made in preparation of that moment. So what that means is if death is coming, it means you understand that your, you know, the day of reckoning is coming, that you'll be accountable for everything in this life. So that means, you know, Allah tells us, you know, um, He'll give us Jannah or he will give us Jahannam, yeah. which means that every action that we do in this life, you know, it's, it's, it's done with this understanding and this thinking process that, so that whenever I, for example, if I want to eat something, it's understanding that actually the thing that I have to eat has to be in accordance with what Allah wants. So I go to the halal section and Tesco's and not mm. the haram section. Or, you know, um, like my friend was saying to me recently, she wants to buy a laptop. So I suggested, you know, which one she should buy. And then she told me that, you know, there's, um, there was an offer to get, if she pays in installments, um, there was like some interest-based um, contract, contract going on. Mm -hmm. So she, was, she made a decision that that's not something she wanted to pursue, even though she really, really needed a laptop. So she obviously made the conscious decision that, you know, interest is haram and she doesn't want to go down that line. Um, and this yeah, is the kind of thinking that we kind of have to go back to yeah. that, uh, before we make an action that we recognize well I'm going to be accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so before I do this is it something that he agrees with or is it something that he disagrees with and in this context it was something that he disagreed with mm -hmm. and so if someone who believes in death recognizes this then all of the things that he does in life will be built around this um, so I guess in some sense the idea is that it's not just an emotional thing like you know some people can think okay 
I have to think about death all the time. I, I need have to, to sit here and I need to cry. That's not exactly. what we're saying. <laughs> exactly. It's more about building your life according to this reality that mm. there is an appointment we have to face and there are consequences with it. And that because of that, this life is a test and I build my life thinking of my criteria, uh, ba basing it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that we, are we come from him and that we will return to him. And so um, I wanted to ask also, this uh, hadith goes on to speak about the fool is the one who follows um, his nafs and does whatever he likes. Um, how do we, uh, well, how do you understand this? Okay, so that's somebody who, he understands that Allah created him. He understands that he should be living his life in accordance to Allah. So the understanding is there and yet he still does what he wants to do. So it's a complete like disregard of Allah and what Allah likes and dislikes, what Allah's commands, like I don't really care, that kind of attitude. So that's what is being referred to here. Somebody who doesn't revolve their life around Allah, but rather around themselves and their own desires. And you know, it, it sounds crazy because the entire point of having a guideline and a criteria is the fact that we, res we look at it, yeah. just like you know, the exams or whatever you have, whenever you have a guideline and criteria, you're supposed to acknowledge what it's asking you to do. But if someone has a complete disregard of that, then, well, that does make you quite foolish because, if, especially when you recognise there are consequences with that. Um, sorry, is there anything you want to add? Um, I just wanted to say, like, sometimes what we do is we, we do actions and then we refer back to the guidelines, which doesn't really make sense because if you don't know how to do the action, but you're making it up and then you're looking back to the guidelines and you're it's kind of like you're justifying what you're doing and mm. that's quite a dangerous thing to do because we're muslim and we can't make you know islam and its guidelines revolve around our desires but rather our desires revolve, revolve around the deen isn't it yeah. yeah and i think another issue here comes the the problem that we have today and that's we plan when we make plans uh, for our lives we plan like 50 years ahead right yeah. and we think okay when I, by this age i'm going to get a house and a car and kids and family and i'm going to have it all right and yeah. we have all of these plans we even plan how we're going to get there yeah. um but what we don't tend to do is sit and reflect on our lives right now yeah. like right now am i living according to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day that i face the job that i'm taking what does it involve in that? What yeah. What's involved in that job? Uh, do I have to do things that are haram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't going to be pleased with? Have I done my research even before I've done uh, those actions? Even the course that I'm studying, there, are, there might be a course that you're studying that isn't actually in line with Islam. And yeah. so have I actually considered what, the, what is Allah's opinion on this? Or am I just going along because it's going to get me you know, money, it's going to get me a good status and it's going to give me security? And so this is the issue I guess we have on a, on a wider scale uh, as people and, and I would again take it back to the fact that we are living in a society that again says look maximize on your happiness it's you that matters most and oh yeah. who cares about you know where we came from and who cares about you know where we're going back to yeah. it doesn't really matter it's about you right now right here live it up make the most you know maximize on your happiness but as Muslims we recognize well everything around us is disappearing essentially every time every moment that we take is disappearing and so we have to refer back to the one who gave us this life and the one who we will return to um, and if you don't do that you have a complete disregard of, of the criteria then it, it doesn't really make any um, sense essentially yeah. so you wanted to add something um, I was gonna say you know you were saying that we plan so far ahead into the future like We've got, you know, the job figured out, the family figured out, we've got everything figured out. And I think that's because we live in a society that it kind of sells us false promises, false hopes, so much so that we're looking so far ahead into the future as if it's guaranteed. Mm. And the so society we live in doesn't encourage us to think about what we're doing now and, you know, the implications of the now because future isn't guaranteed. But yeah, what about like now? Even when we think about the implications of now, it's in a sense that it's devoid of, of our reality of being created being so the way that I mean yeah. that is like you might think of you know your implications in your GCSE exams to like going to a good university and then getting the best job so yeah. we've thought that far but we haven't really thought of the fact that well you know a bit further back I came from Allah yeah. I didn't just you know create myself and a bit further down and yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't even yeah. know sub subhanallah that whether we're going to university and we're going to live this amazing life that we've dreamt up because death isn't guaranteed essentially at what time it's going to come. Um, and so we plan that far ahead, yeah. um, but not really 
for the fact that we, are, we have to prepare for death, essentially, and we live um, however we like. Uh, so the person who follows his nafs, can you explain what it means? Um, can you explain what it means um, further? Someone who follows their nafs. Yeah. Um, somebody who, look, we're all human beings, yeah? We have needs that we need um, fulfilling. Yeah. yeah. By our nature, we need to fulfill certain things. And somebody who follows their nafs and their desires it's is somebody... Yeah. So in this hadith, sorry, yeah. just quickly going back. So in this hadith, it says um, someone who follows his, their nafs however they like. So this aspect where you're saying that we have needs, that's yeah. where it, I guess, comes under nafs. And then for following it however he likes, can you explain that further? It means sure. that they're not linking it back to Allah. So it's their needs, their desires, but they're sort of using their own minds or other people are dictating to them how they should go about fulfilling those needs and then there's a complete disregard of their creator who created them with these needs to begin with. Sure, and if we really take a moment to reflect on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these needs, yeah. um, it makes so much sense that we refer to him because, I mean, like, who knows us better than the one who created us and gave yeah. us these aspects. So, you know, sometimes people can feel like, you know, Islam is really like, doesn't let me enjoy myself, it doesn't let me, uh, it's, it's such a burden on me, yeah. um, it only wants me to think about death all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, but really what Islam is asking you to do is yeah. live life according to the one who created you because he gets you best and he, he knows what you're going through yeah. and he has a solution, he's given a solution for all of these problems that you see around you in the world and you see within your own life. Um, and he knows it best because he gave you these these problems essentially, these things yeah. that you see as problems, well these are intrinsically part of us as human beings yeah. and Allah has given a way of dealing with it in order for us to have harmony within ourselves and with the people that we, uh, we live with. Um, and it, it reminds me of the dua in uh, one of the surahs in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us to say رَبَّنَا أَعْتِينَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَكِينَا عَضَابَ النَّارِ So Allah, I seek um, good in this life and good in, in the next, next life, life yeah. and I seek uh, protection from the punishment of the fire. And that the reason this ayah is so significant is because Islam taught us you don't neglect this life. This life yeah. um, you, you ask for goodness in this life and that you also, but more important, you prioritize the next life. Uh, do you want to add anything to that, inshallah? Yeah, so just adding to your point, it's you living this life, but with a vision of the next life, so you don't neglect the next life, so, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, to again, to add to what you're saying, um, it's kind of like, well, you prioritize the akhirah, realizing that's lasting, like forever. So everything that we do, we live according to the purpose that I did not create jinn and mankind except yeah. to worship me, which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. He said, he didn't create us for any other reason except that we worship him. So we bank on it. So in this life, we just like we save up in our banks for yeah. like, I don't know, the next car that we want to get, uh, if only. <laughs> um, and <laughs> we, we make those, like we, we aspire to those things and we kind of, uh, basically save up for that. So in this life, we do actions according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order that we uh, receive it in the next life. So that is our aim and that is our priority. That's our vision. And so we, we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of him, him being displeased with us. And we look eager to him being pleased with us and we expect you know, good in the next life and we ask for protection from bad in the next life because that is eternal and that's lasting. But also we consider how do I live this life? So in terms of this had, uh, ayah speaking about the hasana, the goodness of this life, yeah. well that comes again back to, well how do you live lives? How do you go about doing your basic things? You know, we, we have needs as you've said, um, so I, I need to eat, I need to socialize, I need to speak to my parents and my family. How, how do I go about doing that? Yeah. I need to interact with society on a wider level, especially as a Muslim we have the obligation of speaking about Islam to people. Well how do I go about doing that? And so all of these relations we have with other people, uh, because we don't live in isolation, you don't just think about yourself. Well, how do I fulfill their rights and how do I fulfill my responsibilities towards them so that on the day of Qiyamah, I can stand and expect good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so in this hadith, um, there's also this characteristic of the foolish person who has false hope. Um, and it, it's meaning that, you know, a person who takes plans without preparation. Yeah. Is there anything that you can add to, like, reflect on this aspect? Um, okay, <laughs> just an example. It, it would be like somebody who makes no preparations for their exams. Uh, they've never made preparations for their exams. They just about, you know, used to get into the classroom every day. 
and then they're so hopeful that they're going to come out with 100%. So that would be a foolish person. Um, and sorry, repeat the question. And yeah, and you know we do this. Sorry, just quickly adding. Yeah. Um, you know we do this again in our own lives. Um, yeah. Like, so we can say, oh, you know, I'm going to, um, and I see this a lot with Hajj preparation. Let's just use that as an example. Mm -hmm. um, so I see in Hajj preparation, everyone's like, yeah, when I get like married and then have a house and a car and all of these things, and I've got a really good job, that's when I'm going to go to Hajj. And I know from even like seeing my own family members who have grown old, that sometimes that never happens. You always make these plans. But the point is, if you've had the means, you fulfilled that obligation. And this is in all aspects of our life. So we don't just look at the obligations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and think, well, one day I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's not about that one day. It's about, well, when can I do it, you know, um, as soon as possible? Because that's the whole point of an obligation. You try to get it done so that you can stand in front of Allah in, on the day of Qiyamah. Uh, but recently I was speaking to this, uh, to a sister, um, and she asked me, well, how do I balance that and, like, preparing for, um, like, basically being ready to commit to an obligation. Okay. Um, so how, how would you say a person, how would you advise a person who, yeah, they should make preparations um, for the afterlife and shouldn't just live according to however they like, but they're saying, look, I'm preparing for it. Like, I'm, I'm getting myself ready to f fulfill an obligation. They're preparing themselves to fulfill an obligation. Yeah. Okay, that's a bad wording. Okay, basically, it's like, say if I'm struggling with, I don't know, um, Wearing hijab, okay. uh, which is uh, something that a lot of sisters struggle with. Um, mm -hmm. How would you advise someone in, in, in those contexts? Um, I would advise a sister to, or encourage her to think about what she's doing in this life. Sure. And her, you know, just encourage her to think about her life and, you know, what, where she's come from and understanding, hopefully get her to understand that she's come from Allah and, you know, Therefore, every action she does in this life is going to have implications. So, and I also, yeah. I guess, another thing that I would add to that, um, just thinking about it now, I didn't know how to respond then. Okay. Um, but it's it's kind of like, well, if we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has created us, we know that He isn't going to put us in a situation that's difficult for us. Mm -hmm. So really fulfilling his obligations in all aspects of our life. So hijab was just an example. Okay. There are loads of aspects that we might not think of Allah um, because it's hard for us, like someone getting a job that they really, really want, but they realize, oh, it's got like interest to do with, something to do with interest and, you know, I don't want to get involved with that. So now there's a conflict um, between something you want and something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, says is good for you. Yeah. And right now, like when you look at it, it looks like oh, what Allah is saying is like really, really tough and it's yeah. not going to get me anywhere in life. And you hear it from people around you as well. Well, you know, if you don't get this job, you're not going to be able to feed your family. All you are is a useless person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you mm -hmm. hear this a lot. But the point is that that's where you do sabr. That's where you are patient with what people throw at you, and you trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has a way of taking you out of this. He's going to make it better. Um, and it's and the the point that you have to believe in is that this is good for me in this life and it's good for me in the next life and it's going to save me from the punishment or worse than that, just Allah's displeasure um, and that is sufficient for, for us as Muslims. Um, so Jazakallah Khair again oh, for this uh, amazing uh, reflection the second time, Alhamdulillah. Um, just for our viewers, I just wanted to mention very quickly that from this uh, talk I've concluded death is a reality so as morbid as it might sound this is something that we should actually reflect on because it has implications not just for our next life but also for how we live this life because we came from Allah and that we will return to him and that means we have to actually consider what is his opinion in all the things that we do. Jazakumullah khair for joining us for this another session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.